In May 2021, Poland became the first NATO and European Union country to purchase drones manufactured by Turkey. Poland agreed to buy 24 Turkish-made Bayraktar TV2 drones for $270 million. The deal was a major political and economic win for Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, as it was seen as an image boost for Turkey's defense industry and Erdogan's AK party, which has been using a nationalist rhetoric to its advantage to shore up political support. The fact that Poland is a NATO member benefited Turkey's attempts to convince the United States that Turkey contributes to one of NATO's most important goals, containing Russia. But most importantly, the Turkey-Poland agreement conveys the story of Turkey's rise from military dependence to self-sufficiency in defense. And Turkey's success story is intrinsically tied with its drone program. So how did Turkey become self-sufficient in drone manufacturing and what led to its success? This is the story of how Turkey became a drone superpower. In April 2021, the US officially excluded Turkey from its F-35 fighter jet program after signing a renewed commitment with eight other countries. In fact, Donald Trump had announced in 2019 itself that America planned to remove Turkey from the F-35 program because of Turkey's decision to purchase the S-400 missile defense system from Russia. In fact, the US was so pissed off with Turkey's decision that it imposed sanctions on Turkey in 2020. See, Turkey has been a member of the 30-nation North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO which was formed as a collective security organization against the Soviet Union. Since the Ukraine crisis and Russia's annexation of Crimea, NATO's ties with Russia have not been that great. So, what does this have to do with Turkey? See, Turkey's decision to purchase the S-400 air defense system from Russia set off alarm bells and warning signals in the West and America. Why? Because the US argues that the S-400 system is a threat to the NATO alliance and the F-35 program, as Russia could use the sale of the S-400 to gain access to the cutting-edge F-35 technology. So, in light of the US decision to kick Turkey out of the F-35 program and the general tensions that exist between both countries, Turkey has pursued an independent defense policy. This can be seen in a drone manufacturing revolution in Turkey. In 2016, Turkey announced that it will stop buying US drones due to US restrictions on drone sales to Turkey over human rights violations in Iraq and Syria. Following this announcement, Turkey thanked the US for not selling drones, as this forced Turkey to develop their own systems. Former Turkish Defense Industry Under Secretary Ismail Demir even said this, quote, in terms of defense technologies, once we render, we will develop it. It might take a longer time for us, but we will do it. Fast forward to today, and his words are not an exaggeration. This is Selçuk Bayraktar. Apart from being Erdogan's son-in-law, Selçuk is also the chief technical officer of Beyka, a Turkish defense company specializing in unmanned aerial vehicles and artificial intelligence. After completing his degrees in electronics and aeronautics from the University of Pennsylvania and MIT, Selçuk returned to Turkey to focus on improving Turkey's drone capabilities. Selçuk convinced Turkish defense officials in the early 2000s that his ideas are revolutionary. The 2000s were a time when Turkey was dependent on the US and Israel for drones and Turkey was suspicious that footage from the drones were being collected secretly by the Israeli intelligence. Turkey cut off diplomatic ties with Israel in 2010 following the Mavi Marmara incident after Israeli forces killed nine Turkish nationals attempting to illegally enter the Gaza Strip. Here, Turkey unveiled an alternative to the Israeli Heron drone, Anka, manufactured by Turkish Aerospace Industries. Meanwhile, in 2015, the Baykar company successfully demonstrated its latest model, Bayraktar TV2. 
GB2s would soon become Turkey's go-to drone and Baker its preferred drone manufacturer. Baker is also in the final stages of completing the next generation Apache UAV which can be equipped with cruise missiles and be used for high altitude surveillance. This period has also seen a rapid growth of Turkish drone companies. The rise in drone capabilities has also seen a simultaneous rise in its defense industry. In the 2015 to 19 period, Turkish arms imports were 48% lower than in the previous 5 year period. Turkey has also reduced its external dependency in the defense industry from around 70% to 30%. The Turkish arms industry grew from $1 billion in 2002 to $11 billion in 2020, of which more than $3 billion were exports, making Turkey the 14th largest global defense exporter. In fact, Turkey is one of the 10 countries capable of designing, building and maintaining its own warships, and 7 Turkish companies are in the list of the world's top 100 defense companies. So, Turkey definitely has motivation, it has shown intent and capitalized on this. The next question is whether Turkey's drones have been tested in real-time conflict. The answer is an overwhelming yes. Turkish drones have been extremely successful on the battlefield. They were used with great success in conflict zones in the Middle East, North Africa and the South Caucasus. In fact, US political scientist Francis Fukuyama says that Turkey has quote, elevated itself to being a major regional power broker with more ability to shape outcomes than Russia, China or the United States. For example, Turkish drones helped turn the tide in favor of Libya's Government of National Accord Forces against the Khalifa Haftar-led Libyan National Army during the Libyan Civil War in 2019. And in the process, Turkey was able to secure its energy interests in Libya. Azerbaijan's military heavily relied on Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones to establish air superiority against Armenian forces during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war. And drones played a huge role in Azerbaijan's victory over Armenia. In fact, Selçuk Bayraktar was awarded the Karabakh order by Azerbaijan's president Ilham Aliyev the contribution of his drones in destroying Armenian ground forces and defense equipment. Drones have also been extremely effective in Turkey's counter-terrorism strategy against Kurdish militias like the PKK in Iraq and Syria, as well as within its own borders. Hundreds of Kurdish militants, including several top commanders, have been killed as a result of Turkish drone strikes. This has given Turkey the advantage of not using its troops more often and hence resulted in fewer casualties. As a result of these achievements, there has been an increase in interest in Turkish manufactured drones. Global demand for Turkey's drones will only increase in the future and could pose a serious challenge to the US monopoly in the drone market. 1. Because they are cheaper. A unit cost of TB2 is around $5 million, while a US Predator drone costs around 150 to 200 million dollars. 2. Turkish drones are easy to transfer unlike US drones, which has to go through several stages of reviews including a congressional review, which can take years and is a cumbersome process. Currently three countries, Azerbaijan, Qatar and Ukraine use Turkish made drones. Poland became the latest country to buy them. Countries like Morocco, Saudi Arabia and Tunisia have shown interest in Turkey's drones. Even the United Kingdom decided to model its drone program based on Turkey's model. However, Turkey's drone program has many challenges to overcome. Turkey is still dependent on US and Canada for parts like engines and targeting systems for their drone program. Canada even cancelled export permits for drone technology to Turkey over human rights concerns. Turkey has also been blamed for human rights abuses against Kurds in Iraq and Syria. Its drones have reportedly targeted civilians. Erdogan is also using drones to prop up a nationalist sentiment among the Turkish population that would keep him in power. And 
he is using drones to deflect from internal problems like his handling of Turkey's economic crisis and the government's poor handling of the coronavirus pandemic. However, Turkey's rise as a drone power or superpower cannot be dismissed. It is reflective of the changing nature of warfare. The use of drones in warfare was dominated by the likes of the US and Israel. However, with the arrival of China and Turkey, drones have become cheaper, easy to access and at the same time more efficient. Francis Fukuyama says that just like aircraft carriers made the battleship obsolete during World War II, Turkey's use of drones is going to change the nature of land power in ways that will undermine the existing force structures.